everybody. We are going to be taping a new rifle today. Um, I have a lot of my students who need to learn how to tape a new rifle and I figured I'd take you along for the journey. Um, I bought this rifle. Um, I was um, bound to get a new one anyway. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and tape this with you guys. Um, when first buying a rifle, if you're new to it, um, there are a bunch of different shops that sell these. Um, I personally usually go through McCormick's because I really like them and they're fast, they're professional, they're great. There are a ton of different places online that sell these. Um, most people get the um, white rifles with the black straps and the black bolts. Um, please ask your director if those are if something different. This right here is a 37 and a half. I like the way that it feels on me. I'm a, more of a 37 and a half person. I have my middle school um, students spin 36s. I know some world-class guards spin 39s. So it's all up to your program to see what size rifle that you have. Some people might not care. I personally think it's all about the size of the person. So I'm a little bigger than my middle school kids, barely, but I am. So um, I like the way that this looks on me and I like the way that the smaller ones look on them. So, um, but be sure to ask before you buy one and spend a whole bunch of money on something that your director wants you to get another one. So, um, now if you're new to this, it does come with a bunch of like hardware and things that you're gonna have to take off. So let's talk through what you need to tape a rifle and how to make it a one um, stop shop to make sure you don't have to stop and get a bunch of things. So first things first, if you don't have a drill and you have a screwdriver, that's great. You're gonna need some muscles, I think. And if you can't operate power tools, I don't wanna say this is a power tool, but it kinda is battery operated, but um, have an adult do it um, to get these little screws and these screws out to make sure that we're taping it properly. Um, so you're gonna need at least a screwdriver or something um, to get these screws out. The first time it's really hard to get out. So make sure that you have um, someone strong or something strong to get these out so you can tape it properly. You're also going to need electrical tape. Um, I'm going to be taping it with, uh, this is like the generic kind of electrical tape, but as long as it's um, three fourths um, of an inch, that's usually the typical length of electrical tape. You can get this on Amazon, you can get it at Walmart, you can get it at um, Home Depot or Lowe's. All those stores sell them, it's just the typical electrical tape. And then, strapping tape. Um, I'll show you what I have. Um, it's the Scotch Just Strapping Tape. It has to have, um, do you see how this has lines on it? Um, that's the best that I've found that helps keep the wood in place if you drop it. So this will be our first layer of tape to go through and make sure it's just protecting the rifle. And then we'll go over with this white tape to make it look pretty. So, um, before, oh, something else, scissors, super important because um, sometimes you're gonna have to cut some weird shapes to make sure you go around things. Um, some people just aren't good at cutting or like pulling off electrical tape. And then um, this usually comes with something to tear it off, but sometimes I have to find like littler pieces. Um, strapping tape's really cool because you can cut it into smaller pieces, you'll see that soon. Um, this is what a final rifle is taped like. So notice that there are chunks of the rifle that aren't taped, and that's okay. The point of taping a rifle is to tape the most vulnerable parts that would be breaking um, if it was just plain wood. So um, obviously the ends, um, do you see how big the end is? It's not just like this big. It's like a pretty good chunk, um, so you can cover the strap a little bit as well. And then a pretty big chunk of the nose also, um, because these are the parts where they're gonna like step the ground and you wanna be sure that these are covered. Um, you can tell that this one's kind of worn down, has some hair on it and a cat, so. Um, but you can tell that this is kind of worn down a little bit. You can kind of see on my couch like this. Um, it's because whenever people drop, you can like scrape it or go like this, whatever you catch. And so um, the tape just helps it uh, protect it. You'll notice that my new one has pads on the bottoms of them. That's pretty typical that you'll have pads on the bottom of your rifles. Um, next, um, this little piece, since this large piece on the end will cover this um, part of the strap, the strap will also get taped over here. Not as much, but I'll show you on mine. And then 
definitely like the middle piece of this where the bolt is and where the neck is where it's the skinniest definitely be taking those as well so um to do that though definitely have to take the bolt off you don't want to wrap it around so let's go ahead and take this thing apart so first things first get that power drill loosen them up first so it's way it was way harder to hurt. there we go these are um typically pretty long because uh, it has to not only go through the bolt but enough to go in the rifle to um, have this stick so um these are um i don't know they come with the rifle but most of the time i can just go to lowe's and find some if um, a rifle breaks which is pretty good um so now you'll see that this is like cut out for the bolt um, and we have to tape over that. So that's where the scissors come in handy. And then you can undo the strap as well if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, sometimes I just lift it up a little bit so I can get under this part um, and I don't have to actually take the whole thing off and I can just put it back on here. Um, same thing with this. Just with the strapping tape, I'll um, put them back before I do the electrical tape over them, but for the strapping tape, it kind of helps me get under these. Um, so it's protecting the wood of the rifle a little bit more. So we're good with that. My rifle's ready and I'm ready to go. Um, some other things that if you need, I haven't eaten dinner yet, so a hot pocket <laughs> if you would like. And my favorite drink, I have some raspberry lemonade. Those are optional, but I'm gonna be sitting here for a while. Um, so I thought I'd make myself comfortable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with this strapping tape because remember, this is what keeps all the wood from coming off. So I'm going to I'm going to start by like, taking a lot of little pieces. Mm, about the size of my forearm is usually like the uh, length that I do. And then I cut little strips of it. Um, so I have to shorter pieces to work with or thinner pieces to work with because the thick parts are fine, but whenever you're doing this really thick part of the nose, it comes in handy. So I'm gonna start here. Um, you do not have to do this, but I do like to take the pad down first. Um, you'll also do this with your electrical tape, but um, for my strapping tape, I find that it helps um, keep the pad on a little bit more secure. So I only just do one strip across the top. Um, and then I just go around. I will say that the shorter um, amount of pieces that you have, so like you don't wanna really do like longer than this um, because if you um, notice, this gets thicker and thicker and thicker down the, the barrel of this and you don't want your tape to be really crinkly and if it's um, like it's already starting to crinkle just because it was uh, wrapping around a little bit more so the more uh, the thinner the strip the easier it is to get all the way around um, without it wrinkling mm -hmm. I like to pull it tight too so once I get uh, a good portion of it on I like to pull a little bit because like I said this is like the thing that's kind of keeping your rifle in place. I have rifles that are cracked underneath, but still last for like a month or two, uh, just because of the strapping tape keeping it together underneath. So um, that's why this part is super important. Okay, getting into the thirds again. Pro tip, go away from the sticky part. It's like the sticky part's facing you and I go, towards my body, that's super helpful. That way it doesn't get stuck because this stuff is really hard to get off of each other. So I'm going to put some of it down. I'm gonna pull tight, like I said. So if you notice, if I pulled it tight, there's some like oh, parts that I didn't get right here. And that's okay, that's why I have these little strips um to cover up those places that i might miss because i'm going around the rifle so tight you don't want any of the um, rifle um, 
like the actual wood part to be showing. So if it does come down a little bit, you wanna make sure that you cover all of those pieces. Now I will say you shouldn't do multiple layers of this because the more tape you put on the rifle, the heavier it can get. So if it's a really light rifle, if you wanna beef it up, that's fine. But um, this rifle, I don't know how I got so lucky the perfect weight. It's not too heavy, not too light. It's the perfect weight. So I don't want to put too much tape on this, um, like too many layers of tape because that's what weighs it down. Two layers is just fine. So I'm just going to go over the pieces that I need to. Um, I'm going to go down a little bit more. This is only about, I don't know, like three inches. I'm going to go down to about, um, mm -hmm. go down a, a, about a half more. I'd say. you notice it's not super wrinkly you really want to avoid it being super wrinkly because if the strapping tape is wrinkly the white tape will be wrinkly and that's just not a good look you want it to be as sleek as possible um so the piece that i taped around is a little bit too long and it's um it's too shiny for the lighting but um, it's a little too long so i'm going to peel it off a little bit so i don't have the strapping tape where uh, my white tape, my electrical tape doesn't need to go i can cut that off might not have that stuff if you um, didn't go too long but um, you want your rifle to not look like it has any strapping tape on it at all um, because this is like i said this is shiny you don't need this part you need the white stuff so all right, so we have the nose done. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but to the butt. screw it right back in and it's still kind of under there. Now I'm gonna do a piece that comes right up here and right up here. Right. The cool thing about the strapping tape is that this isn't the final layer of things. Um, so I don't have to have this even right here. Like there was a little bit gray um, from the other side and that's okay because my white tape is gonna go through. This part's not a super vulnerable part so I don't really need to um, tape that. Now, if you're OCD, totally can. There's nothing against that. I just don't need to because the electrical tape um, will go right there and it'll be just fine. So I have my ends covered and the foam is all strapped on as well on this side. Um, I'm now going to focus on my other piece of hardware and I don't want this to be a huge strip. Remember, it's just, um, eh, say three inches, um, just enough to cover the hardware and make sure that this is supported. supported really well. I'm going to move on to the biggest part of my rifle, 
and the probably the most important this is the pretty thin part and there's a it like curves right here and that's why it's really important to have tape because you don't want it to get super wrinkly the people who just go around with the strapping tape that that's gonna cause all those wrinkles it kind of makes it really heavy too because you have to like put so many layers on so um, remember this is just to hold the wood in place in case it cracks um, you don't want to go all the way through you're only going to go about three inches again two inches um so if i go yeah two inches two inches past the um, like towards the nose and then as long as you're covering the thinnest part of the rifle as soon as it starts getting a little thicker again that's where you can stop the tape on this side so um i'm going to start with the hardest parts over here where it gets a little curvy um and you'll see me cutting a bunch of tape during this part um and that's okay i just want to make sure that the most vulnerable part of my rifle is going to be one not going to be too heavy but also super protected Okay, so now that you can see, I have taped all of the spots I just mentioned with my strapping tape. Now, it took me a few times to go around this and I did it really slow to make sure that I wasn't getting any bumps. Now, if you look really close, you can see that there are two or three, like, and that's naturally gonna happen, but I've seen um, rifles that look like this, so it can be done. Um, and then I've seen rifles that are like, very much all bumps. So the point of this is, um, I did have like a little imperfection in this rifle um, from when I ordered it, which was fine. And that's kind of what made this bump. This one was fine. But um, that's like not, this isn't gonna show up on with like the electrical tape as much. Whenever it's something that's, you can physically feel a whole bunch of lumps, that's what you don't want. So you don't want a bunch of lumps in your rifle. Um, because it just doesn't look as good. So if you did notice, I cut um, my tape really carefully at an angle right here and just put it down over this part 
Um, this is the trickiest part to do, and I don't like wrinkles right there, so I always just cut around it. And then I had a few extra pieces, and I also beefed up the middle part before. That's just a me thing because I like to beef up the middle, and I like to beef up this with small pieces, not large pieces, um, because this is where my wrinkles break. <laughs> I just know from my personal patterns, and you'll learn from yours, that when your wrinkles start breaking, you know where they break. So that's usually typically where mine are. So um, I beefed it up a little bit there, um, but this looks good. I also compared it to the um, done example I already had to make sure that it was similar to the other ones that are in our color guard. And it makes a huge difference on the floor as well. So if you also have that opportunity to just have a model of like where, how much that you taping, things like that, that's also super helpful. So what I'm going to do now, if you have your strap, I would put the strap back on after you do the strapping tape. Um, put the strap back on. Um, I'm gonna screw these down a little bit more. Um, that way I can tape both of them with the white electrical tape because you don't want these um, showing. So I'm going to, other way, righty tighty, lefty loosey. I'm learning guys, I'm learning. Um, I'm gonna screw these back in. You don't want them too tight because next time it'll really be a bummer, but you also want them tight enough. It's not gonna fall out. Looks good. All right. So now that this strap is back on, this is the part that gets um, a little bit more complicated just because your strap is a little bit more down. So you have to do a lot of cutting to make sure that you're going through this right here. A lot of people would just take the tape and wrap it around. That's really hard. Like, do you see this? You're gonna get a lot of bumps and uh, wrinkles in it, which is fine if that's what you would like to do. But the way I do it is I do definitely do a lot more cuts than most people do, I think. And I try to make those cuts up here so you can't really tell and try to keep the pattern even. So that's where we're gonna start is this middle part. So you can see what I mean. So I'm someone who I can just like rip for the tape, but if you're someone who needs to, uh, it's what, 27 years of color guard does to you. Um, but if you're someone who needs to cut it, definitely do. Um, the only reason I'm going to um, be doing this is to make sure that uh, my tape doesn't get super wrinkly around here. So I'm only gonna do short pieces around here. On the ends, you can just go like this, um, carefully, but you can go like that. Um, same thing, uh, but when the strap is in the way, that's when you really wanna start thinking about the pieces, just to make sure that it's nice and clean looking because this is the layer that everyone sees. So the um, under part is for protection and then this is also for protection but also to like make it look a little more clean, like a sleeker look. I know some people have used like colored tape um, for like GE stuff. So notice when I uh, did the tape, I started up here and I ended it, well I tried to end it, down up under the strap so you can't even notice really where it starts and ends um, from like the, from the front or the back. Like there's not a right way or a wrong way to tape a rifle. Like I hope we all know that um, going into this. Um, a lot of directors have their preferences and I think that's totally fine. I, I get it. I'm not super picky as long as like it's done um, clean and you're thinking about the logistics. So if you're just using electrical tape, it's probably not logistically smart just because you wanna make sure your rifle's protected. <clears throat> if you are taping this middle part um, with one long roll, still fine. I find that I get a lot more wrinkles when I do that and it's not as clean looking. Um, even if you like have the strap off still and you're just wrapping it around, just because of the way the rifle is shaped. There's, this part's flat and then there's a curve and then there's another flat part. So it tends to like make all of the tape slant. Uh, if you notice that whenever I was doing the, um, strapping tape, sometimes when we wrap it, it slants. 
hate that. That is the one picky thing that I have um, to make sure that the tape is going like this because you can see the lines. So uh, that is why I prefer doing this way. Um, everyone has their preference and that's fine. But that's my reasoning. I think it's always important to have a reason but behind why you do things. <clears throat> so I'm gonna cover up all of the electrical tape over here. And like right now, it just started to try to go crooked. And if I were to keep going, um, it would be slanted in a less of a clean look. So I'm gonna cut it off. Right there. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna scrap this, all the little pieces I don't use because I wouldn't be very clean. Now we get to the drop down. Ooh, I have to fix that too. But now we get to the drop down. What I like to do is do this um, one piece at a time and have the start of my tape be at Edge, if you can see, that way I can fold it under. You see that? I folded it across like this curved part. And then whenever I go down and around, I can come back up and do the same thing. So do you see that if I were to keep going, it would come naturally down at the angle. I don't want that. And I do a nice uh, layer of tape this way. Another thing to avoid is taping over these holes, um, like in a thick layer. Um, I taped over my screw holes already with my strapping tape, totally fine to do. You could have done that here too and just poked a hole, totally fine. That's a, it's a preference. Um, just whatever's safest for your rifle. And um, like if your rifle keeps snapping at the um, hardware right here, maybe tape over it more times. Just little things to think about. What um, Once you spin a rifle for a long time, you'll know what your rifle needs are based on how you spin. Um, but notice how when I first started the tape, it's, um, I try to get up as close to this edge as possible. And then this tape just goes through so it's covered up at the bolt. So I'm gonna keep doing that, just like little pieces right now to go around that way. I covered up the hole a little bit, but that's okay. I had a bubble and I just smoothed it out with my fingers and then we're good. Um, but if you notice, all my tape is starting and stopping right here and it'll be covered up, you see that? It'll be covered up, so it'll just look like lines going through. Um, if I'm taping it a little tighter, it's the same effect as if I'm going around and around and around. I've come to find out. So like you might think that there's more protection if you're going around and around and around. Fine, if that's what you wanna do, great. I'm more of a uh, stop it right here as long as I'm taping it really tight. That way, I don't have as many bubbles in my tape.
All right, so it took a while and that's okay. Uh, and I, like those bumps are still there, still fine. Um, I covered all of the strapping tape on both sides and made sure that none of my uh, ends, it's okay if your ends are like down here, um, under or right here. So I try to keep that as much as possible, one or two is fine, but really trying to keep it as clean as possible. Um, it definitely looks better than the shiny tape over here. So um, other things to note, um, remember to get up as close as possible to this line right here so you don't have any other strapping tape. The bolt will go right up against that. So you don't want to have any like strapping tape um, right there. And then um, you noticed me like going like this a few times just to make sure that the tape was adhering to the right bowl and um, sticking nicely. So um, we are going to move to these sections right here. Now what you'll see, um, you want to tape over um, the hardware right here. It's really important that that's taped down to the right hole, really, uh, like, really secure. That way, um, it's not really going anywhere. I don't personally tape over this, um, this swivel part of the right hole right here because um, it needs to be able to like move. Uh, some people, if like this breaks and they really like their rifle, they'll like tape the strap down. That's fine too. I just don't like that um, for my newer rifle. So I'm not gonna tape down the like swivel part. I am gonna tape down the part with the screw. I'm just gonna be really careful around this part right here. Um, that's really the main reason why you want your strap on for this part and for the butt for sure. Um, another thing to note, um, I had like a longer extra piece just cause I got a little happy and tore away too much. And um, I remembered that I could put it on um, the tip because you want to take the over the tips first. Um, so I'm gonna need two more right here. But you wanna take over this first before you go around. That way these are covered and you don't see that those pieces. Same thing with the butt of the rifle. You wanna tape over either this way um, with the white tape first. So that way when you're wrapping around, you can't see like the random pieces that are falling off. It just secures like the foam part a little bit more as well.
right. So I have taped over all the ends. And then as you saw, I just wrapped around very carefully so I wasn't getting like those angles like I would have here where it's flat and then kind of curved again. This is just all pretty um, simple. And if you keep your fingers over it, it'll just go on super smooth and no problem at all. Same thing over here. Um, I did have to cut around a little bit to tape over my hardware and that's totally fine. Um, one thing uh, before I put on the bolts, we're in the final stages here, um, before I put on the bolts, I'm going to poke little holes um, where these are gonna go in. So I remember, Um, but also so like it's easier to get in, especially if you're using a screwdriver. Um, it's a little bit more helpful to like already make those dents. Okay. So there are a few more steps. First, I need to make sure that I put the bolts on. on too tight sometimes it'll adjust your bolt um, and like kind of make it crooked I remember um, one time I had a bolt that had some white down here it drove me insane and I didn't know why and it's because the screws were just on too tight and a little crooked whenever I was going down I kind of went to this side and it like moved the screw which moved the bolt so just be really careful when you're screwing these in make sure they're going straight down so you're not affecting the bolt didn't know these little little screws loosen from the bottom most of the time they loosen from the bottom and you can adjust how tight the strap is so they just come right off you can push them back on but because they're so small and easy to just screw on and off um, you want to be sure that you tape these things down the only reason why you would want to take them off right now this strap is actually really, really nice. That's why I really like the Formix. But um, it's already kind of adhered to the shape of the rifle. Sometimes they're a little thick, like the strap is thick and leathery. So it doesn't adhere to the rifle as much and you have to actually like bend the strap to make sure it's kind of curving with the rifle so it doesn't affect your clubs and things like that getting caught on things. Um, but this one's pretty thin and nice, which I really like. But if you can pull, let's do this one. If you can pull your strap down or it's just hanging so it comes all the way down here, you really need to tighten your strap. So this strap is good because whenever it's um, face down, it's kind of laying but still has a little bit of a give right here. If it's just laying down and um, since this is leather, it pulls. So that's why you can adjust the straps to make sure that it's not super loose. This is a curve, like, look at that. It has a lot of bounce to it. Once this pulls a lot, it'll have, um, it, it'll kind of like lower down here. That doesn't happen quickly, but it does happen. So um, you can adjust these to help. I, whenever I adjust mine, I usually. Yeah, I usually adjust down here if I can by the nose because this one's already kind of curved. And if I move this, it's just helping with the curve. If I move this way, the straight part is moving closer to the curve and I don't like that very much. So if I can, I usually move this way. So anyway, these are really important. Um, I know this rifle um, lost there, so they just taped them on. I That's why I like to tape these so they don't fall off and it's like a nice sleek look instead of having these. Um, 
attachments right here. So all I'm gonna do, um, if you don't have any black tape handy, totally fine, um, but ask your, if they have any, tape over, because we really don't wanna lose these, so they can um, really secure a rifle. And um, as you can tell, I've kind of spun this already. And you can see that uh, th this hardware kind of makes a dent in the rifle because it's like metal on wood. So it can kind of damage the rifle a little bit. When you take this, um, it makes way less damage. And this stays nice and fresh because this is actual wood. So it kind of chips away at it. So um, you want as little contact as possible. And to do that, you have tape. And other things that you can do, I would not recommend taking black tape and taping it all the way around because then you'll be able to see those black lines. If your bolt's falling off and it's really a problem, sometimes you lose like one screw because like one of the holes are stripped or something like that. So you can tape all the way around. If you do that though, you're gonna have to take white tape and cut it the exact length to go all the way around the rifle to make sure that you cover up that black tape. So this part is still white and it gives it a nice sleek look. So you can use this black tape to go all the way around to hold down your bolt. I don't recommend doing that just because of like the look that it gives. Yeah. But also if your rifle's broken, you gotta do what you gotta do. But uh, I do, however, like to put a little bit of black tape. Um, this is just a personal preference, ask your director. Um, but this helps keep my bolts on. Um, whenever I drop, I drop hard. <laughs> so sometimes it drops so hard that the screws like to loosen and this just gives it another layer of protection that it won't do that. The bolt doesn't break, but the screws can come out super easily. So um, that's just a last minute final touch that I like to do. Some people like to add spotters to their um, rifles and put like a piece of black tape right here. So when it's in the air, um, your eyes can spot it better against all of the white lights and things like that. That's another preference that people like to do. And there we have it. So as you can tell by all of the examples that I was giving and different ways that you can do this, there's so many different ways to tape a rifle and so many different preferences for each group. So make sure you clarify with your director for those very small specific things like one, what type of rifle to get, how long, colors, things like that. Be sure to ask before you buy. And then make sure that you have all the supplies before you start taping. So you need scissors, your um, something to get the screws out, white tape and white electrical tape and your strapping tape. Make sure you have all of that ready to go so it um, gets done in one fell swoop. Um, those are the only things that I know are consistent. Are It's the tape that we use and you have to take the bolts off to make sure that you get all of the tape around. All the other things are a preference. So if you wanna take the strap all the way off whenever you tape and go all the way around, just carefully so it doesn't skew the tape line, also fine. Uh, the end goal is just to make sure that these are sleek lines and not at an angle and you have to retape them. So um, whatever you can do to make sure that those goals happen, totally fine. The most vulnerable parts of the rifle should be protected. Here, 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 here. And any time that you can reinforce without um, putting more weight on the rifle, like with these little, little things that you can do, the better. Um, rifle maintenance is really important as well, making sure that if um, something, little chips or something, you're always looking to see if it's okay. And uh, if you have to put more tape on it, I've had rifles that like slid down the middle before and they still work just fine. You just have to maybe retape it a few times. Um, so just think about retaping every time that it gets dirty or um, kind of ratchet. This tip really needs to be retaped, so I'll probably do that next. But um, thanks for joining. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to tape a rifle, um, and it's all about preference. However, the main points we just discussed make sure that you're just making your rifle look really nice and you're still catching your heart whenever you release.